account manager here at Paladin. Been working here for about two years or so. Love my job. Love the company I work for, and I love our customers. So working with you people and is excellent. And uh, I've come across so many good quality people, getting to go do on sites and go do shows and interacting with our customers. So thank you so much for your, taking some time out of your busy day to come sit here and listen to me talk and teach about uh, some of the advanced uh, capabilities of our advanced lookup. And I think it's a pretty underrated feature. I mean, it's it, it's a search bar, yes, and so people maybe are wondering, well, what is there to know that I don't know in advanced lookup? You just type in the part number and you bring it up, and you're not wrong. It is very simple and straightforward. But there's some cool capabilities here that I'm not sure that everyone is aware of, so I just kind of want to thoroughly give it an overview and go into some of these things and um, talk about some of the things that we may not know exist in there. I'm sure 90% of it here, uh, ever, everyone will know. Uh, maybe not that much, I don't know. But uh, we're going to cover up and go through some of this stuff in detail here. Now, I am being assisted by Jenny. I'm sure you have interacted with Jenny over the, uh, over the years here. And if you've seen some of our webinars before this one, I'm sure you've seen her present as well. Uh, Jenny, if you, wouldn't be so, if you would be so kind to start the recording right now, that would be great. All right, so as I was discussing earlier, the power today is going to be the power of advanced lookup. It's going to be about 20 minutes long or so, and this is going to be at the easy technical level. Shouldn't be difficult, should be an area of the software that many of you are already familiar with already. Now, if we miss any of this presentation, uh, you can always go to paladinpointofsale.com slash webinars to look at all of our webinars. Also, within the application itself, within Paladin, up at the help menu, there's a little drop down, you can see the knowledge base, the training videos, and then webinars, and that'll take you to our landing page. So you can download them or watch them and kind of watch them after the fact if we're a little too busy to catch it right now. As happens. Okay, so the itinerary today, I want to talk about real fast just what is advanced lookup for some of our newer customers who are joining us today. I may not be familiar with the overall arcing function of it. And um, then I want to talk about how to use it to look up inventory. There's a bunch of different ways that we can kind of sift through our inventory, through departments, classes, keyword searches, things like that. So I want to get into that a little bit. Um, similar story with customers. There's a few different ways that we can bring up customers and how we kind of display that information. So I want to make sure that everyone's aware of some of the nuance there. We can also use it to look up and interact with the customer's history. Customer comes in, hey, I bought this item. I would like to buy this item again, but I can't remember what it's called. Or I need a reprint of an invoice or need to process a return. We can do these things very quickly and easily using the advanced lookup. And then also, and I think this is a pretty little used feature, there's the vendor website. I want to talk about how to set that up and then how and when we can use that to access our vendor's website without ever leaving Paladin. Okay, so what is the advanced lookup? Well, Advanced Lookup is a powerful tool, a powerful search tool, and it's found in every module with the exception of the Reports module by pressing F1. So if I'm in any module besides Reports, I can hit F1, and it'll go ahead and bring up the Advanced Lookup. You can always see this little, I've kind of got a picture of the Advanced Lookup magnifying glass with a little folder there. You'll always see that button down at the bottom ribbon on the bottom left-hand side of the screen once you're in a module. And I'll be hopping into Paladin application a few times throughout the course of this so you guys can see where and what I'm talking about. Uh, in the Invoice Quote module, we have the full Advanced Lookup. So you can look up inventory, customers, history, and your vendor website. This is not true for every version of the advanced lookup. If I'm in the inventory module and I hit the advanced lookup, I can only use it to look up inventory. If I'm in the customers module, I can only use it to look up customers and customers history. If I'm in the purchase order module, I can use it to look up inventory and my vendor's website. So kind of the information that you need where you need it. We're not looking up inventory in the customer module, so there's no inventory lookup in the advanced find there. So if you see me just kind of operating within the, um, within the invoice quo module when I jump over to the application, just realize that the same exact advanced lookup as the advanced lookup that you find in the other modules, but just a little bit more broad, kind of gives you a little bit more overarching access to the inventory, the customers, the history, everything. After going into that module, where you just find that specific information that you're looking for. 
So long story short here is Vans Lookup will help you find the pertinent, inven pertinent info in that module. Okay, so just to kind of go into the inventory lookup here, we can look up uh, many different ways, inventory many different ways. And I've got kind of this bloated picture here, pardon, it's a, it's a little fat and kind of squishy. I had to cut out a little bit and then expand it so it changed the look of it a little bit. But I'm sure we're all familiar with this inventory customer history special order tabs within the advanced lookup. I'm in the inventory tab right now. And you can go ahead and search by class, department, location, supplier, keyword, many different things that we can use to kind of sift through our inventory. I think keyword is probably my favorite one is it allows for the largest group of error. I don't have to know the full word. I don't know how to need to look up a lithium battery. I don't need to know how to spell lithium. I can just type L-I-T-B-A-T and then exact keyword and it'll go ahead and show all my lithium batteries. Now, we also have the exact phrase checkbox right next to it. This is going to be used in consort with the keyword. So if I want to search for, if I have lithium battery put in there, and, and then hit exact phrase, it will bring up all my lithium batteries that have just lithium battery in the name. If I have battery lithium, it will not bring up any item called lithium battery. It will bring up items called battery lithium. So it's kind of an order of operations here, making sure that the exact phrase is what we're searching for, or don't select that if we kind of want to pull back and broaden our search a little bit. Uh, we can go ahead and set up where Paladin defaults to. So when I pull up the advanced lookup, I always want it to start with the option of keyword search. So I don't have to tell it, oh, nope, I'm searching for supplier or location or which one I prefer. It just starts there. And we can do that in the File, Setup, Company tab. And then if you scroll down a little bit, there's going to be advanced lookup pane. We can select which option the Paladin advanced lookup defaults to in both the customers and the inventory search. Um, there's also a pretty good knowledge base article here on how to use advanced lookup to find items to add to an invoice. There's a really good uh, kind of about advanced lookup article that shows are the, all the knowledge base articles about that. And I've ex included a link on the last page of this uh, webinar slides that'll take you to that, um, that, that knowledge base. Some really good stuff there, so go ahead and please use that. And I'm going to hop over to Paladin here in just one second to show you guys how that file setup. I know talking about it can be kind of confusing. Where is he going here? So we're going to go through this next slide, and then I'm going to hop over the application and go over this stuff so you can see that. Now, in inventory, we can do class and department searches as well. We kind of covered the keyword a little bit. The class and department, also location, allows you to click the little down arrow that I've got the arrow pointing at there. And we can see a drop down of all the available departments that we want to search within or all the classes or subclasses that are available. Um, and, and I want to talk about classes and subclasses because it's a pretty cool way to kind of limit our search so we're not just drowning in a sea of hundreds of inventory items when I do a search. Uh, we can also, if that does happen and we have, you know, 100 items that our search brings up, we have a really broad search or perhaps we just pulled up a whole class or department of items, we can hit F1 to bring up an additional search bar that allows us to search the results within that and then we can use F3 and F4 to toggle through some of those searches. So let's go over to Paladin real fast and just kind of see some of these things real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the invoice quote module, this is the advanced lookup. Now, notice when I go in here, I've got my inventory, my customer, my history, just kind of what we were talking about a little, a few moments ago. If I go into customers and I look in the advanced lookup here, I'm only looking up customers. There's not even any tab options at the top because we're expecting if you're in the customer module, you want to look at customer information. Same thing if I hop over to the inventory module and go advanced lookup down here, there's no tab. If I'm looking up information in the inventory module, it's going to be information about inventory. So it's very much limited to what you need in the module that you're in. So let me hop back over to the invoice quote as I kind of want to use that one because I have all areas of the, of the advanced lookup built into that one. So here in inventory, we've got keyword. I can go ahead and type lit bat. And here's all my lithium battery. Now, Remember that within every one of these, I can always click the top column 
to edit this to display it like how I want. So if I want this uh, by description uh, in alphabetic order, I can hit description and it'll bring me my numbers first and then Bs, Cs, and so on. Now if I hit exact phrase, probably not going to find anything because I don't have any items in my inventory called lit bat. If I type the entire word lithium, now it'll go ahead and bring up some because the exact word lithium is embedded into these in that order. So make sure that we're using the exact phrase if we want to kind of limit our search a little bit. So class, department, and location, these three guys right here can be drop downs. So here's my department. I can do a drop down. Let's go into tools. From within tools, I can kind of, because obviously, you know, I've got a teeny little search bar over here. I've got hundreds of items pulled up. I don't want to have to sift through these. Um, even with organizing the top by, by how I want to display this information, it can still take a while to find the information that I want. So from here, I can go to F1 results and search within this. So if I type in square, I'm looking for my square here, and then hit enter, it'll go ahead and take me to the first item that has square within the name. And then F3 and F4 will go ahead and allow me to scroll through all of the items that have square in them. And then F4 goes back up to the top. We can kind of scroll through. Once I find the item that I want, we can always input the de desired quantity. We have to hit enter. Remember, when you're in ever inputting anything in a field in Paladin, to lock it in order to make it so, we need to hit enter to go to the next line. And then I can come down here, F8, add items to the invoice, or I can just simply hit F8 on my keyboard, and it'll add this item to my inventory screen here. Now, class is a really cool one. I really like the class and subclass because it allows us to limit what we're looking at, as opposed to bringing up a whole department of tools and then finding my square within that. I can kind of limit things down a little bit. So here in class, I've got 111 set up as my artist paintbrushes. We can see how this is displayed here. You can kind of see these little indentations. This is 111 is a class. The indentations beneath that are the subclasses that exist within that class. So we have the department, a class within that, and then a subclass within that class, within that department. So it's kind of just a way of narrowing down our search here. So if I don't want to look at all of my artist paintbrushes, I just want to look and separate the difference one here. I just want to look at my paintbrushes. There we go. Now I'm not drowning in a sea of, of paintbrushes. I can just see the four that exist within this class. And once I find the item I want, input the quantity, hit enter, and then F8 dumps it right behind so I can sell this item. Now how to set up where it defaults to. So if I'm in my advanced lookup, I always, I have mine defaulting with keyword as that's my personal favorite because it allows for that biggest margin of error. But if you want to set it to default to class or department or location, whatever you want is totally fine. And how you do to set that up is we're going to go file, setup. Many of you I'm sure are familiar with the back office of Paladin here. We want to go into this company tab. There's a lot of information that exists within this company tab here. And then we've got our company pane, customers pane, RF terminal pane. Let's find the advanced lookup pane. There we go. Now here's the customer default search type. I can have it start with, let's just have it start with name or with all, however we want that, that to do. And then the, the inventory default search type of keyword, supplier, location, class, whatever we want that to do as well. We can also check this little box right here that will allow us to search descriptions one and two. Many times we have one description that's provided by our supplier when we load all the data initially, and maybe you've decided to, to name the item something else, and you've put your own identifier in description two. If we want this to be searching the description one and two, we can go ahead and check this box right here, and it'll search both fields. Keep in mind, this will negatively affect your search speeds a little bit because it's now searching through twice as much data. Every item now has two descriptions that it's looking through as opposed to one. So it can take a little bit extra time. Okay, the customer look up here. Um, again, just like I just got done showing you, and we can we can default where we want it to in the file setup company advanced lookup, and we can search for customers by name, account number, address, phone number. Um, and I really like the name, or just putting it as, as all, 
because it allows, again, for a huge margin of error. And I, and I like having a large margin of error because lots of times we don't have 100,000 items memorized. We don't have 400 customers memorized. So this allows for me to be somewhat accurate and then see all the data that it's displayed and make an accurate decision from there. So if I just type in A, searching under all, it'll bring up all customers that have in their, have an A in their name, address, uh, any of their, any, if any place in their account it displays an A, it'll bring it up. So pretty much everybody's going to be brought up. Now if I put it in the name and then just put in the letter A and search, it'll just bring up all customers that have an A within their name, of course, not in their address or, or anything else. So we can kind of limit it that way. Now it is also not limited by how Paladin displays a name. Paladin displays um, first name last. So I would be Chad Klein in the Paladin system. I can use this to search for Klein Chad, and it'll still bring me up no problem. In fact, I could type in K-L-E space C-H-A, and it'll still bring up Klein Chad. And then once you've located your customer, you select the customer that you want, hit F8, or click down at the little bottom right, to add the customer to the invoice itself. And again, we can always display how Paladin displays the information by clicking at the top of the header. So if I want to go ahead and see all my active ones, I can click on status there and it'll show me active and then the deleted um, inactive ones after that. Or if I want to do it by customer name, I can hit customer and it'll display, of course, all my A's, first B's, C's, and so on. There's also a good knowledge base article on this called How to Use Advanced Lookup to Find and Add a Customer to an Invoice. Take a, take a look at that guy if you've got the time. It's a good little resource to have. Uh, if we put in the History tab here, we can go ahead and uh, there's some cool functionality here. I really like this and I think it's very underused. We can go ahead and type in an invoice number. If we're in the Invoice option, I call these little these little buckets here, options, the little dots where we put them in there. So if you hear me say part option or part and customer option, that's what I'm referring to. And so right now in the invoice option, we can go ahead and type in an invoice number or scan the barcode at the bottom of a customer's receipt to process a return or to bring up that invoice so we can see all the items with the specific prices that that specific customer paid for them at that time of purchase that he originally did that. What this enables us to do is return an item for the exact amount that it was sold to. Many times in stores, I see people just scan the item, put a negative one quantity in the uh, quantity field, and then just process the return. And that works. You can certainly do it that way. The only problem being if we've sold to a preferred customer, our cousin, or uh, you know the local church who we have some sort of automatic pricing structure going on where we would give them a discount, they're getting cost plus five or 10% off or something, we want to make sure that we never end up giving them back more money we ever took from them in the first place. And we want it to be quick and efficient. So here we can go ahead and simply scan the barcode at the bottom of that um, receipt, bring it up, and then process the item that we want to return. And I'll hop over to Paladin and show this here in just a couple seconds. So I really like this. And this history tab is the, it's the only place it's found here is in the invoice quote. So no other place are we going to have the history tab in our advanced uh, lookup. And it was originally created here so we could you know, empower our clerks to have historical data at their fingertips without having to leave the module that they're in, which is important as some of our clerks may not even have permissions to access any of the other terminals, or any of the other modules, excuse me. So we want to give them the information that they're going to need to have right here so they don't have to be clicking all over the place finding what they need to find. Now, something that a lot of people are not aware of, if I have a customer pulled up in the background, so in the invoice quote, we've got a customer pulled up, then I go into advanced lookup, I go into the history tab, and it starts, you guys are probably familiar with it, where it starts in blue there saying all invoices, dot, dot, dot. If you just hit find without actually putting in an invoice number, that will bring up every item that that customer has ever purchased. So if a customer comes in and says, hey, I bought a widget here you know, a couple weeks ago, really helped me level my picture frames on the wall or something like that. I can't remember what it's called. Can you help me? Yes, we can. Just pull up the customer, go into advanced lookup under history, hit find, and then you can see all 
of the all of the items that purchase that person has ever purchased. We can organize it by date and say, hey, was it on the 13th of February that it came in? Yes, it was. Okay, there it is right here. It was probably this item. Confirm it and then go ahead and resell it to your customer. So keep in mind that we can put negative quantities to return an item. We can also put positive quantities to resell that item to the customer. And you can always um, double click on the item to bring up a copy of the invoice as well. So let me hop over to Paladin here so I'm not losing anybody and everybody's following along. Okay, so an advanced lookup here. I'm still in the invoice quote. This customer module advanced lookup, this is the same one with the exception of the history. Notice there's no history at the top here. But if I'm over at invoice quote, I've got my customer, same ways to search, but I've also got my history as well. So I'm going to stay right here so that way I can have access to both of these tabs without having to jump around or anything. Just know that this same advanced lookup for customers is also found in the customer module. So here we go. I can search for name, account number, address, phone, rewards number. Let's just go all here. So I just put A. Pretty much all of my customers, we can. Or I have it organized by account number right now. I don't think I'm missing any. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pretty much every one of my customers at some point in their name or their address has an A. Now, if I just go name and then search there, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, six and seven are gone. Looks like six and seven don't have any A's anywhere in their name. So it kind of limits it down a little bit. I don't expect people to use it that way so much. You'll probably more like type an entire name, James Alex and then just bring up one. Again, I can type Alex James, does the same thing. I can type Al Jam, I can still bring it up as well. So this is pretty open. You don't have to know exactly how to spell this person's name, especially if they've got a crazy name, like my last name, Klein. Certainly not crazy, but there's like 10 different ways to spell it. So just put in Chad K and bring up all of the Chad K's and you'll see my Klein in there. So you don't have to know how to spell my name exactly. Okay, in history here, we can go ahead and just type in an invoice number. I'm just going to type it in because I don't have a barcode hooked up to this computer, but I could just type in invoice number one. Here's every item that was on invoice number one, and I could go ahead and find the item that the customer wants to return, put a negative one in there. Oh, but he wants to buy two of these, so well, that's okay. I can put a positive quantity in there. And again, I can always double click on any one of these to bring up a reprint of that invoice. I've got this pushed into a PDF printer here, so it usually takes a few minutes to pop up. There we go. And then this is asking me to save it, but really we would probably want to reprint it or email it to our customers, whatever we want to do. And then here we've got the invoice reprint. Now I can also do this by part number. So let me part, type a part number in here. Let's actually bring up oh, let's do this, 22272. Here we go. I just typed in a part number, or you could just scan it. It's probably easy, a little bit quicker than just typing it in with your fingertips. But here's a part. Here's every time that this part has been sold to my customers. And I can see exactly which one it is. Oh, broken contracting. Cool. He didn't bring in his receipt in. But uh, I know his name. He's a pretty loyal customer of mine. So I just scanned the item under part, brought up all of the tickets that this part number was contained in, found the right one by name and date, organized it however I wanted to here, and then put a negative one in there. And then F8 will dump the item behind to the invoice. And then, of course, I'd probably want to add my customer here as well, of course. Now, if I do have the customer added in the background, now I can not only search by part, but I can also search by part and customer. So I don't want to find every invoice that contains this part number. I just want to find every invoice this customer purchased that contained this part number. And now we can just kind of limit it down very quickly. Again, I can double click on any of these to bring up a copy of that reprint very, very quickly. Also, it displays my item details down here, which is kind of cool. Here's my primary part number for this item, my current stock on hand, the description, 
and then the price as well. So there's a little bit more information going on here than, than uh, just these lines themselves. Now let's say we just go Rogan Contracting, uh, kind of that uh, what I was talking about earlier, you know, I bought a widget a couple weeks ago, can you help me find this item name? Well sure, Mr. Customer, we just go down to Advanced Lookup, go into History, without doing anything at all, not typing any invoice number, we don't know what invoice number it was, he didn't bring his receipt in or anything, I can just hit Find. Here's every customer Rogan Contracting has ever purchased in my store. And I can of course organize this by maybe date sold, Say, hey, was it on the 7th of January? Oh, it was indeed. Okay, well, we can always double click on it again, bring up a reprint of that invoice, make sure that uh, maybe there's some other items on there that we want to verify, like, oh, this is the right item here. Did you also buy a chocolate bar and some 16 ounce cleaner uh, armor all there? Oh, that's the one. Perfect. Now we found the item. We can go ahead and either resell it to them or process a return on that. And then one here that not everyone may have. This is a very new feature that uh, we've just released. Many of you probably know this, but we release by we release build updates by zip code. So it kind of trickles across the country as our build gets released. So that way, if we didn't do a thorough enough testing or there's a bug or something that uh, wasn't discovered in our testing process, we don't blow up our entire customer base. We just kind of can limit the um, the bug distribution there so we can fix it and then continue redistributing it on to everyone else. That's kind of how we do our release dates. So if you have not have seen this invoice reprint within your version of Paladin, sit tight, it'll be there very quickly. And this is a pretty cool little feature. What I really like about this, if I've got a customer selected and I hit invoice reprint, here in descending chronological order is every invoice, not items themselves, but every invoice that broken contracting has done. So we can very quickly reprint one. You know, he comes back in and says, hey, you know, one of my employees lost um, the invoice from the time that they came into the store yesterday and bought some things. I would like a reprint of that. Well, we can just bring up the customer, hit invoice reprint, and there we go. It's probably the one right on the top. Double click, print it out, give it to them. Now, let's say that I don't have a customer pulled up. So I'm just going to hit escape and kind of cancel and delete all this information. Go back into my advanced lookup here. And under history, I can still select invoice reprint. And what this is doing, this is terminal specific. So this is not bringing up all of the transactions on terminal two, three, four. This is terminal one. It's just bringing up the transactions, the most recent transactions on terminal one. So if I don't have a customer pulled up, it's terminal specific. Again, a pretty good tool for maybe doing a reprint on our invoices for cash customers. We don't know their name, but we do know which checkout lane they decided to buy their goods in, and we know roughly the date and the time. So they can come on through and just be like, oh, which terminal was it? That one? Okay, great. Go over to Terminal 2, invoice reprint, look at the most recent transactions, we can find the cash, the cash sale one. And again, double click on it, can bring up a copy of that transaction so we can maybe look at the date, look at who rung it up, look at the items that were sold with it to verify that it is the one that we want. To go ahead and resell to the customer or process as a return or print the reprint. Okay, and then the last one here, and then I'll let everybody go. We can continue with our day. This is the vendor site. And this is pretty cool. I think this is a really cool business tool. Um, so we don't have to give our employees access to Mozilla, Internet Explorer, Firefox, uh, any of our normal uh, Internet search, uh, Internet um, programs there. We might not want to give our employees access to a program like that where they can just type in www.wastemybossestimeandmoney.com and have open access to the internet. So this is a business tool. You can program into Paladin and says, hey, we want to program United Hardware's website in there or PK's website or Cardinal's or whatever supplier we have that we want Paladin to remember their website. We can program them program that into Paladin and then access that in the Paladin web browser using the vendor site here. And this picture that I've got going on under my vendor side on the little left hand side, this is a little snip that I pulled out of the upper right hand corner of that advanced lookup. And I'm going to show you guys here so there's no ambiguity here in a second, but uh, that's where it is. You can see the F1, those binoculars, that's where we search for the results right in. This button exists right to the right of that one. And if you don't have anything programmed in there, you may not have ever used it. You're like, I don't even know what this button does. Nothing happens when I click on it. 
Well, let's make something happen when you click on it, and I'll show you how to set this up here. Now, this is not available in the Customers module. The Advanced Lookup is that's built to find customers, not inventory, of course. So it's available in the invoice quote. It's also available in the purchase order and the inventory module as well. Purchase order is probably going to be the one where you really use this. So we can bring up uh, the vendor's pictures. We can see their costs while we're building our purchase order, that sort of thing. So let's hop over to Paladin and set this up here. Okay, so in advanced lookup, I've got my vendor site. Now I've already got Orgle's website kind of uh, built into Paladin here, so I can just click on this, takes me right to Oracle's website. We can also have it log in and password, so it remembers your guys' credentials, so you don't have to log in and password every, you don't have to input your login and password every time, it just puts it there and logs you right in. So let's set this up here. What we want to do is we want to first get our vendor's website. So I'm going to downsize Paladin, I'm also going to downsize this right here, and I'm just going to pull up, here's my regular old um, internet right here. And I've got United Hardware pulled up. I'm going to control C to copy that. You can also right click and hit copy. Okay, we want that URL to put into Paladin and it needs to be exact or else it's going to take us to the wrong address. So I'm going to go back into Paladin here. I'm going to go into File, Setup, and then we want to go to Supplier. This is where we go to set up our suppliers. I've got United and Orgle built in there right now. Orgle, we can see, has a website right in there. If I go into United, very easy. Just click right here. We can right click and hit paste. I can also hit control V to paste that in there. Now as with everything we need to save it and now we can go ahead and use that advanced lookup vendor website to find United's website as well. I can go in here to advanced lookup, vendor site, there it is right there. One click it will go ahead and use Paladin's web browser to take me to my vendor site. So I think anything that we can do to consistently make everything in the same place. Every, everything that we can do to make it so I don't have to click out of the software to go into a different program is going to increase efficiency and it's just kind of make our processes a little bit more clean. So I really like this. I think this is a great feature and it's extremely easy to set up as you just saw me do. So the uh, Advanced Lookup, pretty powerful tool here. I think that it's a little bit underused and underrated as a search tool. Um, so please, you know, when you have some time, go in there and kind of follow along with this webinar and search up stuff. Try looking up a couple things or maybe have a little pop quiz whenever I, I'm sure people get frustrated with me whenever I'm on site and I'm teaching them how to do stuff. I'll just kind of pop in behind them and be like, hey, where do I go to scan this receipt to process a return? Might be good to throw out some pop quizzes for some of your crew just to say, hey, where do I go to show me how to reprint in a customer's um, invoice from the 10th of February and I don't have a receipt. Just give them a name. See if they can do it. So this is a pretty advanced tool. Uh, it's pretty simple in its execution, but there's a lot to know. So make sure that we play with it a little bit and kind of get familiar with it. Use your classes, your subclasses to define, break down your inventory a little bit and organize it. It will really help. And that's all I got for us today. Please join me next week, um, next Tuesday morning, as always, 9 o'clock um, Pacific Standard Time. I, this is the link to CKBA, that's Knowledge Base article about advanced lookup. That link right there will give you probably, I think there's seven or eight Knowledge Base articles about the advanced lookup and most of the stuff that we've talked about today here. So if you're a little bit more of a reader type and you learn really well that way, um, please use that link. It'll take you right to the uh, advanced lookup knowledge-based articles. All right, guys, thanks so much for your time, and uh, please join us next week. Hope everything's going well.